Hey everybody. So as we hopefully get closer to an NHL return to play in a 2021 NHL season, I want to talk about some players that I really think could break out next year and, and launch themselves towards being household names and stars in the NHL. Before we get into it, I just ask that you please subscribe and hit that like button. Both of those things help out so much and are greatly appreciated. But these aren't in any particular order. They're just five players that I think really could have breakout seasons next year. And I'll go in depth and talk about each one of them and, and why I think that they could really launch themselves towards NHL stardom. These are all young guys who, who I think have a ton of upside potential. Haven't fully reached it yet, but could be very, very close. Again, it's not in any particular order. These are certainly not the only five guys either that will have breakout seasons. These are just five guys that I picked off the top of my head that I really think could have great years next year. So let's get into it here. Starting with Kirby Dock from the Chicago Blackhawks. He's a 19-year-old center who was drafted third overall in the 2019 draft. And Dock had a pretty solid rookie season last year. Uh, playing 64 games, scoring 8 goals, 15 assists for 23 points. But where he really, really started to shine for me was in the playoffs, when in 9 games played, he had 1 goal, 5 assists for 6 points, and really started to show what level of offensive production he could bring. And he's still just a kid at 19 years old. I really, really liked what I saw from Kirby Dock last year. I loved his play in the postseason, and I think this kid is destined for superstardom in the NHL. He's still so young. Uh, I think he's going to have a huge year coming up next year. He won't be a rookie anymore. He'll kind of already have a, that his feet wet and have a better understanding of what to expect uh, as he as he enters his second season in the NHL. And I really think he could have a big, big season. Talking maybe 35, 40 points next year as a, you know in a 56 game season uh, as a guy who probably takes a top six role in the second line center spot for the Blackhawks. Uh, I am very, very high on Kirby Doc and and think that he's going to be breaking out sooner rather than later in the NHL. Next up, I have Jesperi Kotkaniemi. Forward for the Montreal Canadiens, just 20 years old. He was drafted third overall in 2018, so another third overall pick from the year before here. And Kokaniemi had a solid rookie season with the Canadiens, uh, scoring 34 points back in 2018-19, but then had a real down year last year and a real setback last season where he only played 36 games and had six goals for two and two assists for just eight points and then got sent down to the AHL. Um, last year was definitely a step back for Kokaniemi. However, he did come back up to the big club for the playoffs, and I really, really liked what I saw in the postseason from him. And I think that will, can really carry over into next season and get his career back on track. In 10 playoff games, he had four goals, no assists for four points, and that was in a bottom six role uh, with the Canadians in the postseason. The four goals, a lot of them were kind of going to the net quality goals that you want to see from a young player and the way he played in the postseason was just a whole new level of energy and grit and, and I loved what I saw from him in the playoffs when he came back and he just he was hitting he was going to the net he wasn't afraid to play in the dirty areas he wasn't afraid to get involved physically and I just I really saw a lot of progression in Coke Kaniemi's game in the playoffs compared to what he looked like in the regular season with Montreal. And honestly, obviously getting sent down and, and only playing 36 games last year was not what him or the team were expecting, but his post, you know, for his postseason play and what I saw there, I really think shows that, that he's going to come back stronger and even better this coming season. And I really look for him to have a breakout year. And Nick Suzuki broke out for Montreal last year. He was a guy that really uh, stepped his game up and kind of became a star player. And I think Coke Kaniemi is going to be the guy that does it this year. And he has a chance to be one of the best two-way players for Montreal going forward. And, and he brings a great defensive game. He brings some offensive ability. And I really look for him to be one of the better 
two-way young players in the game this coming season. I think he's going to have a big year. Next up, from the Carolina Hurricanes, I have Martin Nietzsche, who can play center or wing, is 21 years old. He was taken 12th overall back in 2017, and he had a pretty darn good season last year with Carolina. His first kind of full taste of the NHL. In 64 games played, he had 16 goals, 20 assists for 36 points. And then in the playoffs, he had another eight games played with one goal, three assists for four points. And Nietzsche, I think, is ready to take that next step and become a legitimate top six star player for the Carolina Hurricanes. And he's another young, talented offensive player on a team that is absolutely loaded with young talent. So why can't Nietzsche be the next guy to take the step that Sveshnikov did, that Aho has, that Taravainen has? Why can't Nietzsche be that next guy to take that next step into stardom? And I think he's going to do it. I think he's going to play on the second line this year for the Hurricanes. He'll probably play wing if he does play that high in the lineup, but he's going to put up points. I think he has a chance to, in 56 games, he has a chance to put up 40 plus points. Obviously, he put up 36 and 64 last year. Um, I, I think his point totals are going to go up even from there, and he's going to have a huge year for Carolina on a team that is, like I said, loaded with young talent. This uh, Nietzsche will be the next guy to kind of take that step towards stardom, and uh, I think he's ready. He's developed well. They've been patient with him. He's in his early 20s now, and he's ready to really take that next step forward and become a big-time point producer for the Hurricanes. Next, from the New York Rangers, I have Capo Caco, right winger who was drafted second overall in 2019. He's still just 19 years old. And he, obviously last year was his rookie year, and he didn't have a great rookie season, especially for a top three pick. Uh, 66 games played, 10 goals, 13 assists for 23 points. It was a solid year, but not any explosive Austin Matthews type year or anything like that. But that's the important thing, I think, with guys like Capo Caco is to not expect so much from an 18-year-old, 19-year-old in the NHL, especially in their rookie year, and understand that not every player is going to be Connor McDavid or Austin Matthews. Not every player is going to jump right in as a teenager and be an absolute superstar right away. That's not how it works a majority of the time. There's this thing called development. And Kako is a guy who I think is going to develop and get bigger and stronger. And I think he's going to come out and have a really solid year this coming season. He didn't do a whole lot in the playoffs last year. Obviously, the Rangers only lasted three games as they got swept by the Hurricanes in the qualifiers. But he had no points in those three games. And I think he's going to come back with a, a, a better... Um, just like a better understanding of what to expect at the NHL level. I think he's going to come back bigger and stronger than what he was last year. I'm not sure if he was physically ready for the NHL last season. Uh, I think it obviously took some adjusting for him to get used to the North American style and physicality of NHL hockey as opposed to European hockey. And and I, I just don't know if he was physically, you know, strength-wise ready for the NHL fully last season, where I think now he has a full year under his belt. He has a playoff series under his belt. He He's going to have a better idea of what to expect, and I think he's going to be bigger and stronger heading into this season, and I think that's really going to lead to him having a much better year in year two than he did in year one. And another thing that really will help Capo Caco is the fact that the New York Rangers had the first overall pick in this past draft and took Alexi Lafreniere. The pressure is now off of Capo Caco. Like when you look at the Rangers last year, obviously they had the the magnificent duo of uh, Zabinijad and Panarin up front, which garnered a lot of attention, but. Kako was a second overall pick, and there was a lot of focus on him in his rookie season and how he was performing and his point totals and all of that because, you know, he was such a high draft pick. Now, all of a sudden, 
What is all of the New York Rangers media talking about? What is everything you see about the Rangers, whether it's on Twitter, YouTube, writers, everything is Alexi Lafreniere, Lafreniere, Lafreniere. They got the first overall pick, and Alexi Lafreniere now being in New York takes a lot of that focus and a lot of that pressure off of Capo Caco and just kind of allows him to play his game while the focus now turns to Lafreniere as a number one overall pick. And I think that might be really, really beneficial for him in his second year. So I look for Capo Caco to have a real breakout season this year and be a lot better offensively than he was last season in his rookie year. And finally, that brings us to the last one, number five, and one more out of necessity than I necessarily think it's going to happen, but I have Cody Glass, center for the Vegas Golden Knights. He's 21 years old, drafted six overall in the 2017 NHL draft, and he played 39 games in the regular season for the Golden Knights last year, only scoring five goals and seven assists for 12 points, and he did not play in the postseason for Vegas. But they need Cody Glass to step up. He's he's 21 now. He's in his early early 20s. They gave him time to develop. They, they you know he's been down in the AHL. He's played junior and and they need him to really take that next step because they need a second line center for this season. With Paul Stastny traded away for cap reasons, they really don't have a second line center right now. They have William Carlson. And then they have a bunch of depth guys like Chandler Stevenson and Thomas Nosick. And Nicholas Waugh might be the guy, but looking at his style of play and his point totals even before the NHL, I see Nicholas Waugh more as a third-line type guy, not really an offensive juggernaut that you want in your top six. He did play in the playoffs last year and he might be a guy that gets a first crack at that second line center spot behind William Carlson but I really think for Vegas to be a high level team again they need Cody Glass to step up and take over that second line center spot as an offensive guy and he he needs to start producing a lot you know points at the NHL level he only had 12 points in 39 games last year he's going to get a chance I think to play the full season this year with Vegas and, and I think they need him to have a big year. And I think he does have the talent to have a big year. He was drafted six overall for a reason. And there's a lot of offensive upside there. There's a lot of talent there. It's just about putting it together and showing that you're ready to play at that level at, in the NHL. And whether you know, I think they're going to be counting heavily on glass uh, to do that. And I think he might be ready to do that. And he's a guy... That might be a bit of a question mark, but I think the potential is certainly there for him to have a big season this year, take that top six role, and and really have a breakout season for the Vegas Golden Knights. So there are my five players um, that I think could have real breakout seasons. Obviously, I did not uh, have Alexi Lafreniere in there or anyone that hasn't played in the NHL yet. Um, these are all guys who have played NHL games, have played a season in the league, and, and are really looking to take that next step and break out. I didn't want to include recent draft picks, you know, guys like Byfield or Lafreniere who were just drafted this year because we don't have a baseline yet for them. Um, they haven't played a single NHL game yet. So we really don't have that, that jumping off point yet to understand, you know, where they're starting versus where they can go. These guys have all played at least a season, and we do have that jumping off point to know, okay, this was what they did as you know, they're in their first year or in their second year, and now we're looking at them to take that next step and go forward. So that's why I didn't include any, um, any 2020 draft picks in this because they haven't played a game yet. But um, those are all guys, obviously not the only guys, but those are all guys that I think have the chance to have big seasons this year and really break out at the NHL level. So let me know what you think down in the comments. Like, comment, share, subscribe, follow on social media. All those links are down in the description. If you'd like to further support the channel, the links to our Patreon merchandise store and donation link are down in the description as well. Keep spreading the word about this channel. Let's keep this thing growing. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll talk to you guys soon.